Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and in this video we are going to be doing some advanced Avogadro's Law calculations. So grab that periodic table of elements and grab that scientific calculator and let's take a look at an example problem. In this example problem it says that 4.67 times 10 to the 25th molecules of hydrogen gas are placed in a flexible container. If the volume of the gas changes to 97.3 liters, then determine the number of moles of gas that will be present inside the container. And we're going to assume that this is all happening at a constant pressure of one atmosphere and a temperature of 273K. So it looks like we have some sort of container. It appears to be a flexible container, meaning that it can expand uh, and contract. And inside of this container here, it looks like we have some gas particles. And specifically, it looks like we have some hydrogen gas particles that are inside of here. So we're replacing hydrogen gas. And keep in mind that hydrogen is diatomic. It's H2. And so we know, based on the information that's given to us, that we have 4.67 times 10 to the 25th molecules. of this hydrogen gas that's placed in this flexible container. What we also know is that the temperature is staying the same. So the temperature is being held constant at 273K and we also know that the pressure is staying the same at one atmosphere. It's not changing. So if we take a look, the volume of the gas changes. So we know that the volume of the gas is going to change. So this container right here uh, the volume of this container is going to change and the volume is going to change to we'll label this as V2 here the volume is going to change to 97.3 liters so we don't know if this is getting bigger yet or getting smaller yet but we know the volume of this container here is going to change to 97.3 liters and from that we need to determine how many moles of gas will be present in this container after the volume changes to 97.3 liters. So we know that Avogadro's law states that if the temperature and pressure of a gas are held constant, then the volume and number of moles of that gas are going to be directly proportional. Meaning that if the volume is increasing, it's because the number of moles of that gas are increasing and if the volume is decreasing, it's because the number of moles of that gas uh, is decreasing. And so, if we take a look here, what we're asked to figure out then is the number of moles of gas that are going to occupy this, this container if it's occupying a space of 97.3 liters. And so what we have to figure out here is we have to figure out V1 and we have to figure out N1. So that way we can plug those values into this formula right here. But the problem is, is that we don't know how many liters initially this container is. And we don't know how many moles initially that this container contains of the hydrogen gas. We have to figure that out using this value right here. If we take a look, we can see that we have 4.67 times 10 to the 25th molecules. And so if you remember your mole conversion earlier, uh, from an earlier unit, we can convert the number of molecules of this hydrogen gas to moles. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll call this N1. We're going to figure out the number of moles that initially there are inside of this container if we have this many molecules. So we have 4.67 times 10 to the 25th molecules of hydrogen gas. And we know that one mole of hydrogen gas is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of hydrogen gas. And so when we get a calculator out and we take 4.67 times 10 to the 25th divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, we're going to end up with 77.6. 77.6 
This cancels with this, leaving us with moles of H2. So now we know what N1 is. We know what N1 is. We just figured that out. N1 is equal to 77.6 moles. So we know that there's 77.6 moles initially in this container at this temperature and pressure. So now how do we figure out the volume? Well, if we remember from an earlier video, volume is equal to mass divided by density. So if we can somehow figure out the mass of the hydrogen gas that's in here, we can plug it into the volume formula and figure uh, the density formula and solve for volume and figure out the volume over here. So to get our mass, and we'll put this in a different color, to get our mass, we have to take the number of moles, 77.6 of hydrogen gas. Keep in mind that hydrogen is one of the seven diatomic elements. And we know that one mole of H2, if we look on our periodic table of elements, is 2.02 .02 grams. And so when we take 77.6, times 2.02, .02, we're going to end up with 157. So we know the mass now is 157 grams. But remember, we're trying to find the volume. So now what we can do is we can plug this into our volume formula, or our density formula, rather, and solve for volume. So if we take a look, we see that the mass here is 157 grams. And we're going to divide this by the density of hydrogen, which if you take a look on that periodic table of density values that just popped up in front of you, you can see is 8.99 times 10 to the negative fifth. And if you take a look, you'll see that that density uh, table there is measured in grams per milliliter. And so when we put this in our calculator, grams is going to cancel with grams which is going to leave us with milliliters. And so when we take 157 and we divide this by 8.99 times 10 to the negative fifth, we are gonna get 1.75 times 10 to the sixth. Milliliters. But if we take a look, this is in liters, and we have to figure out the volume in liters, so we have to now convert this to liters. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's do some dimensional analysis here to convert this to liters. We want to cancel out milliliters and convert to liters. We know there's a thousand milliliters in one liter. And so when we put this in our calculator, we are going to end up with, let's put this in our calculator, one point seven five times ten to the third liters so we had to do all of this work just to figure out what n1 is and now what v1 is so now we know that v1 is equal to one point seven five times ten to the third liters So now that we have all the variables set up, we can go ahead now and solve for N2. So let's go ahead and do that in our final step. In our final step, we know that we're trying to solve for N2. And so N2 is going to equal V2 times N1 all over V1. And so when we take V2, which is 97.3 liters, times V2, I'm sorry, times N1, which is 77.6 moles. And then we're going to end up dividing by V1, which is 1.75, times 10 to the third liters. And we put this in our calculator. We're going to end up with 97.3 times 77.6 divided by 1.75 times 10 to the third, 
looks like 4.31 4.31 4 what well liters cancels with liters leaving us with moles and this here is going to end up being our final answer and so we'll put this answer right here 4.31 moles and so if we take a look we originally have 4.67 times 10 to the 25th molecules in this flexible container right here the initial volume was 1.75 times 10 to the third liters and the initial number of moles was 77.6 moles that are in this container here it looks like what's going to end up happening here is that the volume of this container is going to get smaller it's going to decrease from 1750 liters to 97.3 liters and in doing so the number of moles of hydrogen gas that is in this container is going to have to decrease from 77.6 moles to 4.31 moles so that's an advanced Avogadro's law calculation type of problem. If you like what you see, go ahead and click that little bomb in the bottom right hand corner that will subscribe you to my channel. And feel free to leave any comments or questions in the comment section down below. And I really hope you guys found this helpful.